What comes to mind when you think of the PlayStation 1? To me, the two biggest things are simplicity and fun. More and more with modern gaming, typically in the AAA space, it's becoming ever apparent that these two things have somehow become lost along the way. Gone are the days where you can just put in a disc and play the game without the need for installing or downloading updates. Gone are the days when creating something fun was a priority, with it giving way for cutting edge graphics or longevity. I have found myself yearning for the simplicity of the PlayStation 1 generation, but after playing Crow Country, it's extremely comforting knowing that the types of games I grew up playing and loving are still being made and exist today. Now before I get into this review, I just want to say that the coolest thing happened that enabled me to play and review it. I was given a PS5 key for this game by Neon Hive, which is the PR and marketing agency for this game. This is the first time something like this has ever happened to me, and I was blown away when I saw the email. So I just want to say thank you so much for giving me a key. You have no idea how happy it's made me, and I really, really appreciate it. Anyway, let's get into the game, shall we? And please don't worry, this review will be spoiler free. Crow Country is a survival horror indie game developed by SFB Games and it's available for all systems bar the Switch. You may be familiar with the developer. They created Snipper Clips, the Switch launch title that came out all the way back in March 2017. So it did come as a surprise to see them tackle a very different genre and I was very eager to see if they could pull it off. Crow Country is heavily inspired by the survival horror classics of the PS1 era, so the likes of Resident Evil, Dino Crisis and Silent Hill. This game first appeared on my radar during the Steam Next Fest earlier this year, and I instantly fell in love with it after playing the demo. Since then, I was impatiently waiting for the full release so I could get my hands on the whole thing, and after playing it from start to finish, it instantly became one of my favourite indie games. So without further delay, let's dive in to Crow Country. <laughs> After booting up Crow Country, it doesn't take long to see the PS1 era inspiration. With its blocky characters, muddy textures and almost tinny sounds, you'll be thrown right back to the 90s and you'd be excused if you thought you were playing Final Fantasy VII, visually at least. The PS1 was my first experience of 3D gaming and I grew up playing the likes of Medieval, Croc and Spyro. The visuals of Crow Country are so reminiscent of that era that I almost wanted to cry. I feel like the developers knew of everyone's anxiety of corridors after playing the likes of Resident Evil and Dino Crisis because the game does an excellent job of preying upon that fear. I was genuinely scared walking down a corridor because I just knew something would jump out to scare me. This game absolutely nails the looks and feelings of that era and it brought such a huge smile to my face. While the game does successfully capture the vibe of a PS1 title, it's important to note that it's not relying on nostalgia to be successful. Crow Country is a very good game, and despite it looking like an old game, it's worthy of being among the best survival horror titles of the present day. And here's why. Crow Country is set in an abandoned amusement park aptly named Crow Country. You play as Special Agent Mara Forrest, a woman who's tasked with locating the owner, Edward Crow, who's gone missing following the amusement park's sudden closure in the 1980s. The game does very little to establish any context. You're thrown in, and it's up to you to find out what happened. It therefore takes very little time to conjure a sense of mystery, and I was fascinated and intrigued by the world within the first few minutes. You quickly find out that you're not alone in the amusement park. There's monsters stalking the corridors, which the game calls guests. I just want to quickly say that I was really impressed with the variety of the monsters. Some of them are really creepy looking, especially the spindly ones that make horrible noises. In addition to the monsters, you'll meet a few different characters along the way who serve as plot devices to move the game forward, but I really enjoyed the writing of each character and I was always eager to learn what they had to say, because each one would slowly but surely expose the dark secrets within Crow Country. The game does an excellent job at world building. Throughout the park, there's many documents you can read such as diaries, letters and newspapers that effectively paint a picture of how Crow Country came to be up until its ill-fated demise. In many games that try to attempt the same, I'm sometimes put off by the sheer volume of these documents and the amount of text within them, which result in me either skim reading them or not bothering at all. However, in Crow Country, they seem to have nailed the size of these documents and the amount of information within them. I was always excited when I came across a new one because of the game's fantastic job of playing everything close to its chest. It's not giving anything away and it's down to you to connect the dots. A letter may provide one answer while raising several more questions, resulting in you wanting to press on without any feelings of boredom and tedium. 
The story takes you through several theme locations that you'd expect from an amusement park. From the deceptive fairy tale town to the creepy haunted hilltop, you'll be unearthing the park's secrets and you'll always be eager to find out what's next. Each area is beautifully detailed and I loved exploring every nook and cranny. There's a lot of visual storytelling to digest so make sure you examine every inch with a fine tooth comb. There's plenty of visual variety on offer here and you'll never grow tired of the environments. The story does throw some curveballs to keep you on your toes, and the hints it does offer are very subtle. They're the sort of hints where if you blink, you'll miss it. I love that level of detail in games because not only does it significantly add to the plot and the characters, but it also shows how much love and passion the developers have poured into it. Overall, the story of Crow Country is one that I think is worthy of sitting next to the games that inspired it. Fundamentally, it's a horror story that's full of the vital ingredients that make up the genre. Violence, gore, mystery, and villainous behavior, and it's a story I think everybody should experience for themselves. Moving on to the gameplay, it's pretty much what you'd expect of a game heavily inspired by the PS1 era of survival horror titles. You can freely run around the environments as well as freely control the camera, enabling you to spot things on walls that could have easily been missed. I found the controls to be very intuitive and it didn't take me long for them to become second nature. True to the genre, you'll gain access to a small arsenal of weapons you can use to defend yourself as you progress through the park. You're not able to run and aim while using the guns, you can only fire them when standing still. Aiming can be quite difficult to master at the beginning, but if you allow enough time and distance between yourself and the monster, then it's not difficult to guarantee some headshots. The only time it did become slightly difficult was in small areas, which turned on the pressure trying to quickly aim and take it down, but I found this only added to the panic you'd expect to feel if you were in Mara's shoes. However, I didn't find the enemies to be too threatening and I always found myself having enough ammo to easily defeat them. The game does encourage exploration so that you find clues for puzzles, but this also means you'll find lots of ammunition so it's likely you'll never run out. Even if I couldn't defeat the enemies, they are very easy to run around so I didn't quite have that feeling of dread I've experienced in other survival horror games. I definitely would have liked to see ammo being more scarce and enemies being harder to dodge, so hopefully that's added on at a later date. Aside from the gunplay, Crow Country is riddled with puzzles and I think this is where the game really shines. With the developers having a history of creating puzzle based games, you can easily figure out why the puzzles are so good in this one. In most cases, the answer to the puzzle was staring at me right in the face, but each one did an excellent job at cryptically hiding it within the limited information that's available. There were a few times when I was scratching my head, but the feeling of figuring it out was always incredibly satisfying. There are so many clues dotted around the amusement park and it prompted me to start writing things down in a notepad so I could refer back to them when the time came to solve it, which is something I haven't done in a very long time. It was such a good feeling when I stumbled upon a puzzle, thinking to myself, I've definitely seen this before, then going through my notes so I could figure it out. It's definitely a feeling I've missed and I'm so happy SFB Games were able to bring it back to me. I would say Crow Country is a puzzle game first and a survival shooter second, but that's absolutely not a bad thing. While the survival side of things may not be really difficult, the puzzles on their own are more than enough reason to play it. There's also 15 secrets hidden throughout the game and I was only able to find a few, so my time with Crow Country definitely isn't over and I'll be jumping back in, aiming for 100% completion and a better endgame rank. So to finish off this review, I just want to say that I loved playing Crow Country. It's an excellent survival horror that has everything you'd expect, but the visuals and puzzle solving keeps it fresh and allows it to stand on its own two feet. It harkens back to the decade that made us all fall in love with the survival horror genre, and acts as an important reminder that games do not need to be graphical masterpieces in order to be good. It took me around 5 hours to complete, but with the many secrets to find, I'm sure I'll be putting more hours into it. I very highly recommend Crow Country and I hope this review has managed to persuade you to try it. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'd like to once again thank Neon High for giving me the PS5 key so I could review it. If you liked the video then please hit the like button and also consider subscribing for more gaming content. I'm so close to a thousand subscribers and it would be amazing if I could hit it soon. Anyway, thanks again and I'll see you in the next one.